Okay, so we're going to try this again. So I'm not going to go back and re-explain the whole <laughs> spring situation here. But essentially, you've got this spring trying to condense itself to its natural state. So you have that force there applying on M1. And you've got this string, that, this spring that is also trying to go to its natural state. So you've got a force pulling down on M1 and pulling up on M2. Okay? And so that creates this system of DEs. Okay? Now... The examples that will be given, and you will be given one of the homework, are going to look like this, okay? So it's not really anything much. You're literally just plugging in whatever numbers they give you and then solving the system of DEs. So this problem is going to be no different than every other problem that we do in this section. The only thing that is different is the very beginning because I have to plug in my constants into that formula, right? Once I plug those constants into that formula, then I have the DE, okay? Whereas all the other problems that you're going to get in the homework already have the constants in there, so the DE is already there, okay? It's already made up. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually put these numbers in here. So notice that here for the first equation, I have M1, X1 prime. So M1 in my case is 1. So I could literally just write X1 double prime. Then I have minus K1. K1 was given to me as 6 times X1, which I don't know, plus K2, which is 4, and then X2 minus X1. Okay, so all I've done was plugged in my mass and my constants. Now let's go ahead and figure out the second equation. The second equation says M2 m2 is 1 so this is x2 double prime then negative k2 which is 4 times x2 minus x1 okay so that's what I have just by plugging in these constants into this DE that was set up for me okay now I do need to simplify this a little bit um, if you noticed when we were solving these DEs over here in 4. Point, I don't even know what section, 4.2, um, all the variables that were in question were all on one side, right? And then there was just usually a constant or something or just a function on the right hand side, okay? So in this particular case, I need to get this guy has my primes, doesn't it? X1. So I need to get all my x1s on the left-hand side. The x2s are fine to stay on the right-hand side, okay? So when I manipulate this, first thing I'm going to do is distribute that 4. And actually, I'm going to do something different because this is a system. It is different from the other ones. Um, bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum, x2 double prime, and I'm going to distribute that negative 4, x1, I hate subscripts, I'd rather have x and y, but whatever, these problems have subscripts, <laughs> so be careful with your x1s and your x2s, right, they are different from each other. So because this is a DE, I'm actually going to move everything over. If it's got an X1 or an X2, primes, no primes, I don't care. All the variables are going to go to one side, okay? And when I move them over to one side, I kind of want to group them together, okay? I want to already start visualizing this stuff as separate. So I'm going to want to put all of my X1s together and I'm going to want to put all of my X2s together, okay? So for the next equation for the top, I'm going to have x1 double prime plus 6x1 plus 4x1 minus 4x2 equal to 0. So I took all three of these terms and moved them over the equal sign, which made them all change signs, right? Now I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. But since I put my x1s in the front and my x2s in the back, I want to keep that same order, okay? So when I start moving these guys over, 
I'm going to put my negative 4x, or I'm positive 4x1. No, when it moves over, it'll become negative. And then I will put my positive x2 double prime, and when this guy moves over, it'll become positive 4x2, and I'll have zero. So that's the bottom equation. I want to clean it up one more little bit. What needs to be cleaned up else? This guy is not going to clean up anymore. Combine your x1s. Mm -hmm. Those are like terms, right? Both of these are just regular x1s. So I really have x1 double prime plus 10x1. And so this is the system that I'm trying to solve, okay? All I've done is take what they gave me, put it into that formula, and then simplified it to look like what the rest of your problems are gonna look like, okay? So all the rest of your problems are gonna start here. You're not gonna have to do all this manipulation at the very beginning, okay? It's already gonna be set up, ready to go. For this one though, because it's the coupled spring system, we do have to plug in the numbers and then turn it into the system, okay? Okay, here's where we start the process. So we need to start these steps. So the first step is to Laplace transform both equations. Now this is where I start cutting my page in half and I like to have one on one side and one on the other side and then work downward, okay? So for me, I'm going to actually Laplace x1 double prime plus 10 Laplace x1 minus 4 Laplace x2 and then I Laplace 0. And over here on the right hand side, I'm going to have negative 4 Laplace x1 Laplace x2 double prime plus 4 Laplace x2 equal to 0. So I'm just Laplacing each term and then kind of factoring out the coefficients at the same time, right? That way I don't have to write two different lines. Okay, I'm just doing two steps in one. <coughs> and then I need to use a definition for the double derivative, okay? So for the definition for the double derivative, it's s squared times the Laplace of x1 with no primes, okay? Minus s times x1 of zero. No, I'm sorry, times x of zero. Minus x prime of zero. Then here, I'm still gonna have 10 Laplace of x1. Here, I still have minus four Laplace of x2. And what is the Laplace of zero? If I try to put zero in that, inter that integral, what is the integral of zero? It's a zero. So I really don't have to do anything on that right-hand side. However, I need to simplify this, and I need to get it to where I have LY, LX1 and LX2 together, okay? What is X of zero? Or X1, right? And X1. So what is X1 of zero? That would be up here. X1 of zero is zero. So this guy's not really there. It's a zero. So that term's going to go away. It's going to be a zero. What about x pri x1 prime of zero? x1 prime of zero is what? Is one. So this is going to be s squared l of x1 minus one plus 10 l of x1 minus four L of X two equal to zero. Is 
Now, this is the idea. I want to rewrite my systems again. I want to rewrite this again. Okay? So I do need to have my X1s and my X2s. And anything that's not an X1 or X2 needs to move over to the other side. So this guy right here doesn't have an X1 or an X2, does it? So this guy is going to move over there. So what am I going to have on my right hand side now? Just the one. So this side is going to become a one. Over here, I want to put the L of X1 together. If I put the L, and I don't like to do it in the back. I like to do it in the front. So if I put my L of X1s together, what would be in the front if I factored the L of X1 from these two terms? What would go inside this parentheses? S squared mm -hmm. plus 10 minus 4. Nope, not minus 4. Why not minus 4? Because it's an x squared. Right, that's an x2. And that's the only x2 I have, so that's his own little guy all by himself, right? I'm getting kind of crooked over here. Oh, it's not me, it's this thing. <laughs> okay, so I want to keep that there so you can see. So now I have my L of X ones together, my L of X twos together, and then everything else on the right hand side. Okay, this is getting set up for another another system. Okay, I'm gonna do the same business with the right hand side. So the first thing I need to do is use my definition for the double prime. Okay, so I'm gonna have negative four L of X one still there, plus S squared L of X two with no prime anymore minus s x2 of 0 minus x2 prime of 0 plus 4 l x2 and again still the 0. It really should have been Laplace of 0 up here but I just already jumped to 0. Okay now what is x2 of 0? x2 of 0 is what? x2 of 0 is 0. So this term is going to disappear. Okay. What about x2 prime of 0? What is that? Negative 1. So this here is going to be a negative one. So when I rewrite my line, I'm going to have negative 4 L of X1 plus S squared L of X2. A negative and a negative will be what? Positive 1 plus 4 L of X2 equal to 0. And now I want to set this one up exactly like I did the other one. So I want my L of X ones together and I want my L of X twos together and everything else that doesn't have an L X one, L X two is going to go to the right hand side. So right now the only term that needs to move over is this one. And when it moves over it becomes what? Negative one. Negative one. And I kind of already still have them grouped, right? Since I already previously grouped them. So I have four L of X1 and I'm gonna have L of X2 but I have two terms so what am I gonna have here if I factor L of X2 out from those two terms S squared, S squared plus 4 S squared plus 4 okay this is my new DE okay so it doesn't have the primes bless you it doesn't have the primes and the double primes or anything anymore right it just has this Laplace junk so I've got to start figuring out how I'm going to figure out what is L of X1 all by itself, what does that look like, and what does L of X2 look like all by itself. Just like you solved your system when you were doing your partial fraction decomposition, that's the exact same way that I do these problems. So I don't do the let this variable equal zero, let this equal one, I don't do that. I do the elimination method, okay? And so I'm going to do the elimination method here. 
if you try to do substitution or those other methods, it could get weird, okay? Not that it's not already weird, but <laughs> I just find it easier to do elimination method when it comes here. But honestly, you can do whatever you want. That's just my choice, okay? So the nice thing about elimination method is you want them to have opposite signs, right? But the same coefficients. So let's just say I want to figure out what L1 is, L of X1. That would mean I would have to eliminate L of X2, wouldn't I? So if I look at both of these, I want to eliminate the L of X2s. They already have opposite signs, that's nice, right? But this one has a four in front and that one has an S squared plus four in front, which means I'm gonna have to multiply this whole equation by an S squared plus four and I'm gonna have to multiply this whole equation by a four so that they can both have four and S squared plus four in front of them, okay? One with a plus, one with a minus, they'll wipe each other out, right? But it's gonna affect everything else, so I have to do it, okay? So let me use a color here to write what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take this guy's coefficient, which is S squared plus four, and I'm gonna multiply it to the whole DE over here. Oops. DE, E standing for equation, right? <laughs> Forget the rest of it. <laughs> okay. And over here, I'm going to take 4 and multiply it, this guy's coefficient, and multiply it by this equation. So I haven't done it yet. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. Okay. And this is just so that when you're going back and you're looking at it, you can kind of tell where everything came from. Okay. Now, normally when we're doing elimination, we like one line above the other, right? So that we can see them visually cancel and then we can combine our like terms. So when I write the answer to this one, I'm going to put it here. But when I distribute this four here, I'm going to put it underneath. Okay. So you can see them cancel. Okay. I'm going to do this all in blue because this is my process to figure out what L1 is. We're going to have to repeat the whole darn thing again to figure out what L2 is. Okay. So you see what I mean by this is like double whammy, right? It's hard, okay? I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot going on, okay? So let's put this here in blue. So I'm going to take, and I'm actually gonna star this because this is what I have to come back to when I go to figure out what L2 is, okay? I have to use these same two guys again to figure out what L2 is later, okay? So here, when I multiply, I get S squared plus four times S squared plus 10 times L of X1. Here I get minus four S squared plus four L of X2 and then S squared plus four times one is just S squared plus four, right? Then now this one here, I'm gonna put the answers down here. So I get negative 16 L of X1. I get positive four S squared plus four L of X2, and I get a negative four, right? Four times negative one is four, negative four. So I've done everything. I'm going to now combine these so that I can eliminate, right? These guys are completely the same, but with opposite sides, right? So those guys are gonna wipe each other out, leaving me just with X, L of X1s. These two also wipe out, don't they? So I have, oh my God, all this stuff. I have S squared plus four, S squared plus 10, and now a minus 16, all times L of X1. And on the right hand side, I just have S squared. So if I wanna solve for L of X1, what do I do? Yes. So first I need to get everything that's in that bracket, right, over to the other side so that I just have L of X1 all by itself, okay? Now before, I'm, well, at the same time that I move it over, because when I move it over, where's it going to go now? 
under the S squared. So I'm going to have a bunch of junk under this S squared. I'm going to actually distribute that out and minus the 16 while I'm doing this, right? While I'm putting it underneath there. So S squared times S squared is S to the fourth. S squared times 10 is 10 S squared. 4, S, 4 times S squared is 4 S squared. So I'm going to have 14 S squared. And then 4 times 10 is what? Uh, minus 16. Mm -hmm, 24. Okay. Now, if you can factor this, you're supposed to. Okay, and I think I can because 2 and 12 make 14, don't they? So you want to factor that. Otherwise, your partial fraction decomp is really, really ugly with the fourth power. So this is going to be s squared plus 12, s squared plus 2. Do you agree that that? comes out to s to the fourth plus 14s squared plus 24. But because I have squared and a plus and squared and a plus, those guys can't be factored anymore. So they're stuck like that, which means you're probably going to have cosines or sines in my answer, aren't I? When you're stuck with s squared and plus signs. Okay. But if I want to figure this out, I'm going to do this in another color. If I want to figure this out, I'm going to have to do that partial fraction decomp. Okay? So I'm going to have S squared over this guy. And then I'm going to end up with something over this quadratic. And then something linear over this quadratic. Okay, and I may not have made left myself enough room. Luckily, this is an erasable pen, so I'll go back and erase if I have to. So when I multiply by the common, again, this is the way I solve DEs, right? I mean, uh, systems. However you solve systems, go for it. But what I do is I multiply by this here, here, and here. And so what ends up happening after everything cancels... is I end up with this. And then I have to finish solving the DE. So you know how like DE is like a baby part now, right? Of all of our problems. It's not even the big part. It's a baby step to the whole thing. So let me distribute, I get a s cubed to a s b s squared plus 2 b. Here I get c s cubed 12 c s um, d s squared. plus 12d. Okay, so I'm going to equate my coefficients. My highest exponent I see there is what? S to the what power? Cubed. Do I have any S cubes on the left side? This side? No. So then my coefficient on the left side should be 0, right? And all my cubes are going to be A plus C. After cubes come squares. What is the coefficient of S squared on the left-hand side? 1. And all of my coefficients on the right-hand side of S squared are B and D. After S squared comes S. What is the coefficient of S on the left-hand side? Do you have any regular S's on the left hand side? No, so it should be zero. And then I have 2A and 12C. Finally, I get to my constants. There's no constant on the left hand side, so it's zero. But my constants over here, the guys without an S, are 2B and 12D. 
So we've got this system to solve. This is nice because it's literally like two little two systems in one, right? Because you got the A's and C's already match, and then you got the B's and the D's that already match. So there's two separate ones there, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to multiply the whole thing by a negative 2 so that I can cancel with this guy. Well, 0 times negative 2 is 0. That would be negative 2a and negative 2c. Put the other one underneath it. And I get 0 equals 10c, which means c equals what? 0. If I divide 0 by 10, it's still 0, right? Which means I'm not going to have any s's up there. Okay, I can take that and plug it back in here, but then what would a have to be? That means that a also equals 0, doesn't it? Which means I don't have any s's up there. If there's no s's, that means I have no cosines in my answer, right? No cosines. Now let's go to the other two. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to multiply it by a negative 2 to cancel out the b's. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, negative 2b, and negative 2d. 0 and negative 2 is negative 2. Those guys wipe each other out. And here I get 10d. So what is d? Not negative 5. Oh, right. The 10 is going to go downstairs, right? So negative 1 fifth. Good. Be careful because that's a common error. I do it too sometimes. Okay? Be careful. Then I'm going to take that and put it back into this equation so I can figure out what B is. So if I add 1 fifth, I'm going to get that B is 6 fifths. Okay? So even though I don't have any terms with S's in my answer, I am going to have those coefficients in there, right? So let's go back. This was all of my side work. That, it's not that it has nothing to do with my problem, but it's not a step in solving. It's just a step in manipulating what I have, okay? So now I can come back here and rewrite this as no A because A is 0. So this guy's not going to be there. But B is 6 fifths. And instead of putting it up top, I like to put it in the front and just put a 1 on top. Okay. For the next term, um, I don't have any C's because I got C equal to 0. But for D, I got negative 1 fifth. So this should actually be a negative 1 fifth coefficient and then 1 over S squared plus 2. And so now I can Laplace inverse everything. If I Laplace inverse everything, I'm going to get x1 by itself, 6 fifths Laplace inverse of this, minus 1 fifth Laplace inverse of this. Is it ready to use my formulas? Mm -mm, what am I missing? If I don't have an S upstairs, then what do I have to have upstairs? Uh-huh. The K, right? Whatever's down here, S squared plus K squared. And that same K needs to be up there, doesn't it? So I do have to manipulate this a little bit. I'm leaving space there. What is being squared to give me 12? The square root of 12 squared gives me 12, right? Which means I need a square root of 12 up here. But if I put one up there, there wasn't one originally. If I put one up there, I have to put one down here as well. So that they cancel, and it really is a 1, it's just in disguise, right? Okay, same thing over here, but it's not 12. What is it? Square root of 2. So if I put a square root of 2 there, 
then I have to put another square root of 2 downstairs. So now I get x1 equals, and this part will be sine of square root of 12 t. Minus this one here will be 1 over 5 square root of 2 sine of square root of 2 t. Now I did not put my coefficient there because that can be simplified. Now in the book, sometimes they leave them like this and sometimes they um, rationalize the denominator. It just depends on, I don't know who wrote the book. I guess it depends on who was doing the solutions because some of them have them rationalized and some of them don't. I don't care, they're the same thing, doesn't matter. The only thing I do care about is that it can be reduced. Square root of 12 can be reduced. I'm gonna do this on the side, I don't wanna do it in here, I'm just gonna put the answer there, okay? But this is what I'm trying to simplify, this coefficient right here, okay? The square root of 12 is actually four times three, isn't it? And what is the square root of four? two. So really I have this. And this two can be reduced with this six, leaving me with the three over five square root of three. Okay? So that's what I'm going to put in here is three over five square root of three. If you wanted to rationalize it, you could, but you're not required to rationalize them. Unless the directions for some reason literally say rationalize any um, of your denominators. But this is half the answer. <laughs> half the answer, right? I figured out what x1 needs to be. Okay? Still have the whole other side of my paper because now I gotta do the whole thing all over again, right? But with a different focus. Now we need to focus on x2. Okay? So I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm gonna put the blue pin down. I'm gonna pick up another color, maybe purple. And we're gonna go back to the beginning. This is the beginning. This is where I had the L1s and the X2s side by side, everything else on the other sides, okay? I've gotta go back to that. I already figured out how to eliminate X, L of X2 so that all I had left was L of X1. But now I wanna eliminate L of X1 so I can be left with L of X2. So now we focus on these coefficients. In order for me to make these guys cancel, I'm gonna have to multiply this one times a four, right? And I'm gonna have to multiply this equation by an S squared plus 10. They already have opposite signs, so I don't need to worry about making one of them negative, okay? They already are positive and negative. So this is the game plan. I'm going to take um, four times this equation And then I'm gonna combine that with S squared plus 10 times this equation. Oops, that should be negative one. Okay, once I distribute the four and I distribute the S squared plus 10, then we can do the elimination part like we did right here, okay? So let me go ahead and distribute that. I get four S squared plus 10. Here I get minus 16 L of X2. And here I get four. At the bottom, I get negative four S squared plus 10. I get S squared plus 10 times S squared plus 4. And over here I get a negative S squared plus 10. Right? Negative 1 times S squared plus 10. There we go. 
So then when I do this, these guys are going to cancel. They're the exact same thing, one positive, one negative. So they wipe each other out. Over here, I'm going to have s squared plus 10 times s squared plus 4 minus 16. times the L of X2. And over here I'm gonna end up with four minus S squared minus 10. All I did was distribute that negative, right? And I got this. I think we've already foiled the S squared plus four and the S squared plus 10. Do you have a question? Oh, you're scratching your head. <laughs> so I have uh, S, where, where sure. This 4 is up there, and then okay. minus s squared and minus 10. So it's okay. these guys. So I'm just combining the right-hand sides. And then that and that's 40, but minus 16 we already said was 24, right? And then here it's negative s squared minus 6, if I just combine the 4 and the 10, right? So now we want to get the L of X2 all by itself. So I'm going to do 2 and 1. I am dividing by what's inside the brackets, but I'm going to factor it at the same time. Since we already have it over there in the blue right next to it, right? We already know that all that junk is going to factor into this. So instead of putting the trinomial downstairs, we're just going to put the factored version downstairs. But unfortunately, our numerator is not exactly the same as the numerator before. So we have to do a whole nother partial fraction decomp, okay? So we do it all over again. Um, I'll use green. So this is my extra side work. I don't know where it'll end, so I'll just wait. I'm gonna skip this step. I'm just automatically gonna multiply and get this here, okay? So I'm going to end up with negative s squared minus 6. And I am going to have this exact same thing, right? It's just the numerator that's changing, okay? So this is what I'm left with instead of just s squared. But on the right-hand side, it's going to be all exactly the same thing. The as plus b times that, the cs plus d times this. I'm not even going to write it out in that way. I'm just going to do the expanded version already. It's exactly the same thing, okay? We got lucky in that regard are not the same and you have to do the whole thing all over okay but here we're cheating because it is the same stuff we're just going to have different a's b's c's and d's so then when i set up the system that's where it's going to be different so again, the highest exponent over here is cube. But do I have any cubes on the left-hand side? No. So this is going to be zero. Then I'm going to set that equal to a plus c. Do I have any coefficients for s squared? negative one, so that's gonna be b plus d. Do I have any coefficients for s? No, no s is here, so zero. 2a plus 12c. And then finally, do I have a constant on the left side? Negative six. And so that's gonna be equal to the constants over there which are 2a, no, I'm sorry, 2b plus 12d. And just like we did before, we're going to put the two together with the a and the b, a and the c, and then the other two with the b and the d to figure out them individually, okay? So for these two, I'm going to multiply the top one by 2. So 0 times negative 2, actually. 0 times negative 2 is 0. This is negative 2a, negative 2c. If I put the other one right underneath it, what am I going to get for c? Mm -hmm. 0 again for c. Then if I plug that back into the top equation, what do I get for a? 
A is zero. So again, we're probably gonna end up with signs again because there's no more S's, right? It's supposed to be A in front of the S and C in front of the S, but both of these guys are zero. Now let's do the other two. I'm gonna multiply the top one, this one here, by negative two. What's negative one times negative two? Positive two. Negative two B, negative two D, and then the other equation right underneath it. So I get negative four, those go away, and 10 D. So D equals what? Right, we can reduce that negative two fifths. So if I plug that into the top one, I'm gonna have to add two fifths, which means I'm gonna get negative three fifths for B. Negative one plus two fifths is gonna be negative three fifths. So that's all I needed from my partial fraction. Now I'm gonna go back and finish up the problem. So back to my purple. I'm gonna have L of x2 equal to, there's no A, so no S's, and then I got B, but I'm gonna write it in front as my coefficient. And then C was zero, right? But for D, we got negative two-fifths. And we already know that we're gonna need to put in those square roots, right? So when I go to figure out what X2 is, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the square root of 12 here, and then the square root of 12 there. And then the square root of two here, oops, and then the square root of two there. And then this we know can simplify. However, let me see, negative three, five square root of 12. I don't think it actually does anything. So I get negative three, five times two square root of three. I just have 10 square root of three, but I can't reduce, right? The three and the 10 do not reduce. So it just stays negative three over 10 square root of three. And this becomes what? What does all of this become? This one cannot simplify. And what does this Laplace inverse become? It's sine again, right? But square root of 2 t. And now I have x2. Okay? So you see how long these problems are, right? I still have two more examples that I want to cover. <laughs> but we're not gonna have time. I'm gonna start one, but we're not gonna be able to finish it in 15 minutes. Maybe, maybe not. Some of them are super duper long and some of them are not so long. Of course, you're probably gonna get one on the test that's not so long, right? Because we don't have a whole lot of time to be doing them. <laughs> but just as long as you've got the process down, okay? You got it set up for the system, then you have to do the laplace and all of that. It, it just takes a while. Okay, so that's that problem. This one was actually really long because one of the reasons it's really long is because we had a double prime, right? At the very beginning, we had a double prime, which makes it a little bit longer than the problems that just have a single prime, okay? So this was the introductory problem that the section had, so I went ahead and put it in there. Um, and you're gonna need it because it's gonna be an example on how to do one of your problems in the homework. Okay? They're gonna give you all those M's and K's, you're gonna plug it into that formula that they give you um, and then you work it all out so you do need to have this formula in order to do one of the homework problems okay so make sure that you have that or you go to the video later and you get that formula okay 
But here's another problem of what it looks like when it's not one of those coupled mass problems. This is just a regular random mm -hmm. DE, okay? The thing I like about these is there's no X1 and X2. That gets really, really tedious and, and hard to distinguish. And a lot of times I don't like subscripts, so I end up dropping them, and then I have to go back and figure out who's who, okay? So in here, it's X and Y, and that's a little bit more distinctive, right? So the first thing I like to do is I like to change these guys to primes, just because I don't like this notation. So the first thing I'm going to do is change that to prime, and I'm going to change that to Y prime. And then we're going to start doing the Laplacing and then getting them set up. So you have to Laplace them, you have to simplify them, and then get everything with the variables to one side so that you can prepare for the Laplace system. Okay? So yes, this is two equations, it is a system all by itself, but we got to get it ready for the Laplace system. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is Laplace each side. And I went ahead and just took out the coefficients at the same time, right? Same thing that we did before. I'm going to use a definition for the prime. So that's going to be S Laplace of X minus X of zero. And same thing here, S Laplace of Y minus Y of zero. Okay, then to simplify this, we've got to do two things. The game plan is to do two things. One is plug in the numbers for x1, x0, and y0, right? Got to put those in. Then the second thing is remember the strategy. We want all the L of x's together, all of the L of y's together on the left-hand side, and anything else that doesn't have an L of x or L of y should go on the right-hand side, okay? So we've got two things to do here to get this set up. So first thing I'm going to do is plug in this. What should be getting plugged in for x of 0? Almost. Negative 1, right? So this should become a negative 1. But what happens when you have a negative negative 1? It becomes plus 1. And then here I'm going to plug in for y of 0 which is going to be just 2, so it's just going to be minus 2. Now alphabetically, I like to put them in alphabetical order. I know before I put the x1s in the left and then the x2s in the right and then everybody else on the other side, right? So here, x's come before y's in my alphabet, so I'm going to put the x's first, then the y's, then whatever else on the other side. So this is going to be s L of X minus L of X because I moved this guy over the equal sign plus 2 L of Y I had to move this term over to the equal sign and this guy doesn't have an L so he needs to go to the other side okay so it becomes negative 1 this is almost set up almost let's go do the same thing to the other one I'm gonna put the L of X first so change the sign because it moved over the equal. Then plus S L of Y. And then plus L of Y. Because in order to move that guy over, it's got to change signs. And then this guy doesn't have an L, so it needs to go to the right-hand side. Which means it's going to become a 2, positive 2. Almost, almost got it. I don't like to have L of X, L of X, L of Y, L of Y. I just need one L of X and one L of Y, which means we factor it out. And then what would go in the parentheses if I factored the L of X from those two terms? Mm -hmm. This coefficient S, that coefficient minus one. Same thing over here with the L of Y's. I don't want double. I just want one L of Y. So what goes in that parentheses? Mm 
Mm-hmm. S plus one. This is the one. I'm going to put a little red star. This is my system of Laplace. This is the thing that I'm going to have to redo twice. Okay? One focus on one variable, then focus on the other variable. Okay? So I'm going to start cutting my paper in half and then doing it in two different So bear with me. Okay. So for the first one, I want to get L of X first. Okay, and it doesn't matter which one you do first. It's just a matter of this junk being over here or over here, right? It doesn't matter which one you get rid of first. But if I focus on getting rid of the L of Y, I'm going to have to multiply this equation by this coefficient. And then vice versa, I'm going to have to multiply this equation by that coefficient. Problem is, they are not opposite signs, are they? So that means one of those numbers is going to have to be negative. I would rather multiply by a negative 2 than multiply by a negative s plus 1, right? It just looks better on your eyes, okay? So this is the game plan. I'm going to take s plus 1 and multiply it to this whole equation on the left side. And then I'm going to take s no, negative 2 times this whole equation. I don't want to write it over there. I'm going to write it over here. And you don't have to write this step. I'm writing it, right, because this is the first couple times you're seeing it. Usually you just go jump straight into the next step. So if I multiply this equation by the s plus 1, that means I have s plus 1 times s minus 1, l of x, plus 2 s plus 1 times l of y, minus 1 times s plus 1. At the bottom, negative 2 times um, negative 5 is going to be a positive 10. And then I'm going to have negative 2 times s plus 1 L of y. And then negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. So then I end up with s plus 1, s minus 1, a positive 10, all times L of x. These are exactly the same, 1 plus, 1 minus, which means they wipe each other out. And over here, I'm going to get negative s and negative 1 and negative 4 when I combine those on the right-hand side. Almost ready for partial fraction. s squared minus 1 plus 10 is positive 9. And then I have negative s minus 5 here. Okay. So I'm going to take negative s minus 5 over s squared plus 9. I already have a linear above a quadratic, don't I? So I do not need to do partial fraction decomp on this one. It's already done. There's no point in doing it. You only have one factor downstairs and that's it, right? So you don't need to be doing partial fraction. That's what's nice about this one. However, the problems that have s squared plus a number squared are sines and cosines. One has an s, one doesn't have an s, right? So you're going to have to split this. You're just going to have to put one term over the denominator and then the other term over the denominator, right? You're just splitting the fraction into two. Now, if I want a Laplace inverse, I'll get x, and I'll get negative Laplace inverse of s over s squared plus 9 minus 5 Laplace inverse of 1 over s squared plus 9. This one's ready. This one's not. Right? If there's no s on top, then you need to be having the root of this number up top. What is the square root of 9? 
3, which means I need to have a 3 up here, don't I? If I put a 3 up there, how do I undo that so that this is equivalent to the, what it has before? You've got to put a 3 down here, right? So that that divided by that is still the 1, okay? So that means I get x equals negative cosine of 3t negative 5 thirds sine of 3t. And that's it for x. So see how these are a little bit nicer, right? It only had one prime and I didn't have to do partial fraction decop, okay? So this one's a whole lot shorter than the other one. I don't even know if that picks up in the video. He's gonna watch it later and hear me talking about him. <laughs> it's something like that. It's not that. It's not long. It can't be because you have like two hours, but among other problems, right? So it's not. It can't be that long. It has to be a little one. Um, okay, another side. Okay, so we got rid of L Y so that we could just get X, right? Now we gotta get rid of X so we can have just Y, right? So you're gonna go back up here to where I start. Now you wanna get rid of the X's. So that means multiply, they already have opposite signs, right? This one's positive in front and this one's got a negative five in front. So I don't have to do a negative. But what I do have to do is a five times this equation And then I have to do what? An S minus one times this equation. So that when I'm done, they'll both have five S minus one. It's just one will have a positive and one will have a negative. So let's actually multiply this out. We get five times this. We get 10 times this guy and negative At the bottom we get negative five times S minus one. And then we get S minus one times S plus one. And then we get two times S minus one. So now the L of X is cancel. And I have this left negative 5 plus 2s minus 2. I distributed the 2, right? This is s squared plus 9. This is 2s minus 7. But we already have a linear function on top of a quadratic. So you don't need to do partial fraction again, right? Also, you have one denominator, right? So you don't have to do partial fraction decom. However, we do need to split it so we get the sines and the cosines, okay? So I'm gonna take out the two and just do s over s squared plus nine minus the seven and do one over s squared plus nine. Is that the same? is what I had before. So I basically did these two steps, well, kind of like this step and this step together without the Laplace. I haven't put the Laplace in there. But I took whatever that coefficient was and I put it in the front. I took whatever that coefficient was and I put it in the front, okay? But I am gonna Laplace inverse it now. So I get two minus seven, and the same thing as before, right? This should be sine because there's no S, but there has to be a three up here, which means there needs to be a three down there. And now it'll fit the description for sine. And once you have X and you have Y, you have solved the system. That's it. Those are the two guys you're trying to find.
okay? So they can be shorter, I mean, it's still long, right? I mean, I took the whole page, and if you're not cutting your page in half, you could probably possibly be taking two pages, right? Um, they're still long. It's just this one's not as long as the other one because I didn't have to do partial fraction decomp and I didn't have a double prime, okay? And I think I went over a little bit. So I'm gonna stop here and we'll do the third example the next time. If you wanna try the homework before then, the homework is one, five, and 13. Well, you have a week. <laughs> So, I can't remember, but one of those is the, um, let me see which one is it. One of those is the one with the masses. So you just plug in the numbers and then you make it turn into a system like we did. Number 13 is the one with the masses. And then one and five are just a single derivative, not a double derivative, okay? The next example that we're gonna cover before we start the review, we don't even really need to cover the third example because we already have actually. My third example, I don't know where my paper is, there it is. My third example is a double prime, and a double prime, and a double prime, and a double prime, right? The only thing different is is that there's another function here, and that can happen. It might not necessarily be zero, like it was in an example if I move these x's and y's over, don't I have it equal to zero? And if I move these x's and y's over, don't I have it equal to zero? Whereas here, you don't have zero. You have a function of t. So when you Laplace it, you're going to have junk over there already. Okay? So it's the same thing as example one and two put together. Okay? So I want to cover this example first, and then we'll go over the review in the next class. Okay? But that's all we have in the next class is this one problem and then to go over the review, okay? And then the following Thursday, so a week from today, is when we'll have the test, okay? Does that make sense? On Thursday. On Thursday. Well, today's Tuesday. No, it's Tuesday then. A week from today, but that's a Tuesday, not a Thursday. So Thursday, we're going to do the review, put everything all together, right? Finish this last problem, do the review. And then on Tuesday, a week from today, is when we have a test, okay? So at least had the weekend to kind of tie up any loose ends with your homework, look at that review some more, and then be ready for Tuesday, okay? So I hope to see you all on Thursday. I'm glad you guys made it out here despite the weather. But I'm also glad it's raining now so I can have a dry Halloween. <laughs> Not a rainy Halloween. I know. Oh, thank you.